So today I want to do a Bible study on Matthew 7, 21 to 23. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. So, <clears throat> the ones, he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. So, who are these ones who are professing Jesus as Lord, which is Yahweh? In Hebrew, it's Adonai. They changed it. Because the name Yahweh is a sacred and holy name. It was too sacred to even be spoke. So they switched it to Adonai, which means Lord. So they're professing Jesus as Lord. But there's no, there's no truth behind it. There's no, these people, they're paying lip service to God. They have no action behind their profession. For instance, Jesus says in Luke 6:46, "Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say?" Because if you love God, if you love Jesus, you're going to do what he says. For instance, let's let's break this word love down real quick. So the word love means agape. And agape is a action word. Most people think of love as a feeling and an emotion and all this stuff, but in the Bible, it, it, it's an action word. For instance, you, you go to John 3.16 and he says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So because God loved the world, he did something. He gave his only begotten son. So there's action behind the word love. And these people professing Jesus, professing him as Lord, there's no love, there's no action behind it. It's all it's all just talk. You know, these these are false prophets, these are false disciples. There's no true repentance. Then it goes on, but the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. What is the will of the Father? Well, the will of the Father is to keep his commandments. So Jesus says that the greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and with all your mind. And no one, no one can do that. That is impossible. We have all broken the commandments, the greatest command. We've already broken the greatest commandment, but even the Ten Commandments, we've all broken those. We, there's no possible way for us to keep any of those commandments. So... That's pretty cool because it, it makes it to where you have no hope. Our only hope is in Jesus. So outside of Jesus, if we try to hang on the law, hang on the commandments, we fail every time. So we must hang on the Lord. He is our only hope, our only Savior. Um, John 6.40 says this. This is the Father's will. That everyone that sees the Son and believes in Him will have eternal life. And I myself will raise Him up on the last day. So I want to compare this verse to Numbers 21, 4 through 9. Um, so it is about um, the people, the Jews, um, when they were with Moses, you know, they were walking in the wilderness. Uh, they all begin to, to complain and sin against God and they were just, you know, complaining, nagging God. So, God punishes them. He sends these fiery serpents and they start striking the people and killing the people. So many people are getting bit and, they're, and a lot of people are dying. So they come to Moses and they tell Moses, we know that we have sinned against God. We've We've done wrong. We're sorry. Please intercede on our behalf for the Lord. 
So Moses goes and he, and he prays to the Lord and he talks with the Lord for them. And God tells him, all right, so make this golden snake and lift it up. So it's this big golden snake and they, they lift it up. And he says, anyone who looks upon this snake, when he has been bit, his life will be saved. He'll be okay. So this is pretty cool because these fiery serpents, you know, they represent the devil. And when they bite the the people, it's it's like it's their venom is the sin. The venom kills the people, just like sin. It kills people, and we've all sinned. We've all been bitten by this fiery serpent. But the hope is that golden serpent that was raised up that represents Christ. That represents the cross. All who look to Christ, all who look to that to that golden serpent they will be saved you see what i'm saying so it's it's a uh, it all goes it's the same the golden serpent is the cross and and we look and we'll be saved so our only hope jesus again always um so verse 22 says lord lord do we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name so these people are claiming to be Christians they're claiming to be followers of Jesus they're calling them Lord they're prophesying they're casting out demons they're doing mighty works I want to use an example I sorry if I offend anybody by using this example but it's a good example and it's the truth so we'll use Ellen G. White and Charles Taze Russell. Ellen G. White and Charles Taze Russell both predicted the end of the world. Ellen G. White predicted it in 1843, and 1844, 1845, and 1851. I'm having this conversation with you and the world's still going on, so false prophet, right? You know what the Bible says about false prophets. They're not of God. Uh, Charles Taze Russell, also, The Second Coming of Christ, um, 1874, and also, The Watchtower predict, predicted it like 10 more times, didn't come to pass, so, you know, they might look like us, sound like us, you know, but they're not, they're not of us, they're not of, of God, I mean, they're false prophets. Um, you think of Judas, um... In uh, Mark 3, Jesus appointed the 12 apostles to go out and preach and to cast out demons. Judas was among the 12 apostles, and he was not of God. You remember, Jesus even called him a devil. So, Acts 8, 13-19 talks about Simon the magician he believed the miracles after he saw Peter display them by the works of the Holy Spirit he was even baptized by Philip and um, when Peter and the other disciple came you know and they were laying their hands on people and the people were receiving the Holy Spirit Simon saw this and he wanted to buy this power from Peter. He wanted to have this power to where he laid his hands on somebody. They would receive the Holy Spirit. So, at first when you see Simon in the story, it's like, oh wow, he's getting baptized. You know, he's following Peter. He's, he's a Christian. But later on in the story, it goes to show his true colors come out. His heart was evil. His heart desired to buy this power for his own d evil desires, you know, his own wickedness. Um, you know, Jesus says that every good tree will bear good fruit and every bad tree will bear bad fruit. So you will know the tree by the fruit. These people They profess the name of the Lord. 
but they're not of him. Just because someone claims to be a Christian, it doesn't mean they're a Christian. I can use myself for an example. Three years ago, I would be going to the club, partying, drinking, doing whatever I wanted to do, living my life the way I wanted to. But on Sundays, I would go to church, drink all week, go to church on Sunday. I was a Sunday Christian. There's no such thing as a Sunday Christian. That's made up. That's only here in America. It's a hard truth, but it's the truth. This is for me a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, I would have been the one saying, Lord, Lord, did I, might, did I not do many good works in your name? I fed the homeless. I told people about you. Shoot, even when I was drunk, I would speak about you. And then he would have said to me, depart from me. I don't know you, you worker of lawlessness. I lived a life of sin for myself, a selfish life. But I went to church on Sunday. I said a prayer. I asked Jesus to come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. So I'm saved, right? No. That's the biggest heresy to ever come into Christianity. If you believe that you are saved because you said a prayer once and you asked Jesus to come into your heart, you received Jesus, do you know how arrogant that sounds? Who do we think we are to receive Jesus? It's like, no, he receives us. You know you're a Christian when you've been born again, when you have, you have repentance, when the Holy Spirit convicts you of your sin. You're no longer to go out and, and go clubbing and partying and, and drinking and, and have sex with random people. You can't do that because the Holy Spirit won't allow you to. You'll be convicted. The music I used to listen to, it makes me sick now. If I, if I start seeing nudity on the TV, I fast forward it. It, it makes me sick. The world disgusts me, it's perishing. This is how you know what's real and what's not. The Holy Spirit will enter your life. You will die to your old way of life and you will be raised new to live for Christ.